Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world's most official back tier list. You want to look like a cobra. You want to look like a flying squirrel suit man with your shirt off because we all know that's the only way to find a mate in 2023. Welcome, I'm Salah Mike. Tap in. Today our categories are, as starting at the top, the S tier, definitely not natty. I know I'm in good shape. I know I'm jacked and lean when I'm getting the not natty, you're on steroids accusations. The next one, do you compete? Are you a bodybuilder? The B tier, what's your Instagram? C tier, nice beginner gains, you rookie. Next one is, do you even lift? And then, I'm sorry for your loss. And today, the complete list of back exercises that you need to be doing. We're starting off. Nice light work, slight work. The hyper extension. Now, the hyper extension, I think, is a great little move if you're trying to grow your little cakers, but it's kind of the rookie caker move, and it's also very lower back um, emphasized. So, not a big fan myself. I think you look kind of dumb on them, for one, and I never want to look stupid. Two, I honestly think that you're not going to build as much muscle. Uh, the range of motion's uh, decent if you're on a, a 90 degree boy or a 45 degree boy. But honestly, we're going to throw the hyper extension in the nice beginner gains. It's a, it's a movement for a commercial gym normie. And you all know we're meatheads. We're not the normies. Next. Even in the thumbnail here, we got some bad mamma jammas, which almost makes me more biased. We got the T-bar row, and I believe we got Jay Cutler doing the T-bar row. If you're a badass, if you've been into a hardcore gym back in the day, you've actually done a straight T-bar row where you're shoving a barbell into a corner or you're having a homie stomp on the corner of it where you're rowing as many plates as humanly possible, probably 45-pound plates with a very shortened range of motion, and you're slapping your tummy with the fucking plates. Um, overall, very savage movement. It feels really good because you're kind of doing a, a deadlift with it. You're feeling tough, but the overall arching goal is range of motion and stability when you're trying to build a back so if you balance what's actually being useful here and how tough you look this one's kind of a 50 50 draw and i'll probably throw the t-bar into what's your insta not a bad movement per se but it's definitely not optimal for savagery and it's obviously not optimal for hypertrophy next we're leading in again we got some badasses in the thumbnails Ronnie the King Coleman with the barbell row. And I know, just I know what you're about to say. All you little TikTokers, all you little JPG stands are coming at me saying that the barbell row has no stability and you're going to be limited by your lower back strength. Well, guess what, you little pussy? Get your lower back stronger and then you're not going to be limited by it anymore. On the on the savagery scale, Barbell rows are near the top. And I think that everyone, joking aside, should learn how to do a proper hinged bent over barbell row. If we're talking about hypertrophy, sure. We want to isolate a little bit better. A little bit more stability will allow us to use our lats through the movement and not rely on our low back, hams, and glutes. But the savagery scale on this one takes over the entire conversation. So the barbell row is a staple for the meathead and it's going straight into definitely not natty you should at some point learn how to barbell row do more barbell rows get a stronger low back glutes and hams um, mostly just because i said so and your back will thank me later seated row machine i don't know who we got in the thumbnail but the seated row machine is a very vague term because some feel great some feel like trash um, overall you're going to look kind of lame doing it. But, so on this savage scale, we're moving down. But if you want to build a big old back, having a nice stable range of motion with a stable path of the bar, a seated row machine is a great, great piece, a great, great movement to add to any gym, to any gym goer. Um, we'll probably throw that in the do you compete category. That's probably the A tier. Um, they feel good. Find a machine that works for you. Find a range that works for you. Again, you can manipulate where your elbows go a little bit wider, typed up a little bit more narrow, um, and still get a lot of progress in. Cali Muscle's very own. The pull-up. 
I don't see enough pull-ups and chin-up variations happening on the internet. You guys are a bunch of freaking pussies. Um, the pull-up on the Savage scale, 1 to 10, is probably a 10, although sometimes it's underrated. Uh, in terms of the actual hypertrophy, I think it's great too. If you can control your range, you can have different grips, a neutral grip, a supinated grip, close grip, wide grip. There's a lot of variations you go to build different areas of your back or emphasize different areas of your back. Plus, it's fairly easy to load, to be honest. It's, it's generally stable. Yeah, there's maybe more stable options. Um, but overall, again, the pull-up is going to go into the definitely not natty category. And here's the big banger. Here's the show you came for. The prime time, the deadlift with Ronnie Coleman. And I know, again, you TikTokers with your... Cur I, I can see you. You have a dangling earring. You have curly hair. You have a fake tan. You have no hamstring or back development. Yet, you're going to come on my channel and try to tell me how to build a back. Seabass, enter my back right here for these little nerds. We call that the street cred. So you can see what you're dealing with. No dangling earring. And I have legitimate lats and legitimate traps. Unlike you guys who are commenting and trolling below. The deadlift on the Savage scale is 11 out of 10 and even and even listen up bitches even for hypertrophy the deadlift has a lot of merit and the only response you're going to have when you come to me is but the deadlift has no eccentric portion and the eccentric portion is very important for hypertrophy well the deadlift only has no eccentric portion if you drop it like a fucking idiot no one tells you or dictates what tempo you should or should not control the deadlift in. So just like an RDL, I can take my deadlifts and lower them in a three count. Guess what? My ass, my lats, my pussy, my crack is bigger than yours. Listen to me. The deadlift's going into definitely not natty. And in any comment below, this is not a democracy. Any comment below with any negative about the deadlift will get blocked and banned for the next century. Moving on. The single arm dumbbell row. Again, another staple piece that I think everyone should learn how to do and perform properly. Although on the Savage scale, it's hitting a B tier. And on the hypertrophy, how much we're actually stimulating the muscles we intend to um, is probably again in the middle row so this one's an easy one for me i think you should learn how to do it i think you should learn how to brace and really row that lat deep into your hip but the single arm dumbbell row will probably go into what's your insta moving on the old school black and white picture we got the dumbbell pullover now, honestly, I haven't done a lot of dumbbell pullovers. They've always felt awkward to me. And also, we're always dealing with gravity here. And so when you're handling a dumbbell in certain positions, um, you just won't feel the resistance in the full range. So the dumbbell pullover is one of those for me. I think on the Savage scale, it looks dope because Arnold Schwarzenegger did them. Um, but in the actual application, I'm more of a fan on doing a straight arm pullover or pull down. I'm going to throw it in Do You Compete because I think... If you have a machine pullover or a cable pullover, um, those are great, great, great movements. The seated row. The seated row, I think, is just a pussy version of the barbell row. So again, we're not stable enough to have it really high on the hypertrophy scale. We're not savage enough because we're sitting down like a little sissy. Um, and shout out to my boy, Mike. Don Mazzetti's uh, our wonderful uh, example model on this one. Mike uh, is a 10 out of 10 on the Savage scale, but uh, the seated row will probably go into a nice beginner gains. If you want to up that hypertrophy, let's get something more stable like a chest support, um, a single arm, or something where our whole body, we don't have to focus on bracing. Um, and then if you want to go up on the Savage scale, at this point, might as well do a dumbbell or barbell row in my opinion. The lap pull down, a classic. Somehow big motherfuckers make this look uh, very savage, although it's still like a five out of 10 savage. Uh, and again, with different grips, uh, different elbow positioning, different body torso lean, if your knees are locked in, it is fairly stable. Um, and it's really, really high on the hypertrophy scale. It's probably some type of pull that you will need uh, to add into the game. So uh, I'm going to put it at do you compete because it's probably going to be a staple. You know, it's got to be in there uh, to some extent. Chest supported row. Ding, ding, ding. I think we have a winner. If I had to choose one first round draft pick, maybe not on the savage scale, although you can make it a little more savage by doing it with free weights. It looks a little tougher. Um, a hammer strength. 
uh, a cable row, but you have something on your chest, maybe an incline bench you're sitting into and leaning into or even bracing yourself with a locked out stacked arm. I think the chest supported row is the perfect balance of Savagery, uh, maybe a seven or eight, a 10 out of that. And probably one of my very favorite hypertrophic stimuli that we can dive into. So I'm putting the chest supported row at the top of the definitely not natty. If you want a big back, a strong back, if you want to help it for your powerlifting or just get more jacked for the beach this summer, the chest supported row or some variation of it should be and has to be on the list. Yoga. We just took an entire genre of fitness top to bottom um, that is not known for hypertrophy and probably has a bunch of niche individual styles of yoga and we just threw it all into one um, and I'm sorry to all my yogis out there. Trust me, I love Lululemon. It has blessed us all with its gifts. Um, but you're going into sorry for my loss. You could probably do yoga until you're purple in the face and you won't have that cobra back. Now we're getting real weird though. We're getting real, real weird. We have the sumo deadlift. Which even if I broke down the sumo deadlift or I broke these exercises down into what body part we're going to work more the sumo is probably going to be on the anterior of our body the sumo deadlift sure your spine your traps your grip and your lats are playing a huge role in stabilizing they're not a dynamic mover in this glutes and hams are small dynamic movers in this the biggest mover in the sumo deadlift is your quads so um, for that case I'm going to throw it into the do you even lift. And again, I know these TikTokers are coming for me because the opposite side of TikTok, who are huge sumo, polo, uh, sumo pullers, barely having that thing in your fingertips, trying to pull the massive amounts of weights for the clout. Trust me, I got some respect for you, but you all got tiny backs. Let's be honest. You may pull more weight than me, but you got a tiny little fragile back and that's not what we're about today. If we're doing uh, what looks the coolest lifting on my fingertip competition, you guys would be number one. But today you're in the do you even lift category. The straight arm pull down. This is what I was talking about before. The dumbbell pullover is absolutely great. But the straight arm pull down, I think you can have um, a more significant range of motion with tension. Um, as I manipulate my body, as I kind of pull these things, I change my torso angle. Um, I think it's absolute staple on the savagery scale. It's way below the dumbbell pullover, to be honest, but on the, uh, get jacked scale, it's high. So I'm actually going to swap these out. We're going to do a mid season switch and I'm going to put the straight arm pullover. Cause I didn't know it was in here. I'm going to put that boy into the, do you compete? And I'm going to put the dumbbell pullover down into what's your Insta. It's going to be above the super yoke though. But that's purely because of the range of motion and the tension you get on that range of motion. You know, from whatever, 45 degrees all the way up to 90. Gravity's not doing a ton on your lats. Um, where with the, the cable lap pullover, uh, you, you definitely can or pull down. Suspended rows or the inverted row, I actually think is a highly underrated movement. You use like a TRX or a band, you get it from the top of a rack. You can put your feet up at varying heights, making your body more horizontal to the ground to raise tension. Um, it adds a little bit of core work. So again, on the hypertrophy scale, yeah, maybe the stability isn't as good and, and we're not really focusing in on the stimuli of our lats and our rhomboids, our back, like a chest supported row. But overall for athleticism and even hypertrophy, I think the suspended row or the inverted row um, is a very underrated movement. I'm going to put the that guy into m maybe mid-range on what's your Insta. Again, yeah, if you really are just focused on hypertrophy, you don't care about anything else, maybe not the greatest movement, but I do think it can teach you a lot about body control and it can also build a, a very nice stimulus on your back. So I do like the inverted row for a lot of athletes, a lot of younger people trying to learn how to control their body, um, be stiff when you need to be stiff, be mobile when you need to be mobile. We got a couple guys, I'm gonna just do them together. We got the dumbbell shrug and the regular shrug. Um, I'm personally not a huge fan of shrugs. I think they definitely have merit and obviously working um, your traps in a vertical movement is something you top on the uh, uh, icing on the cake if you're having issues growing your traps. I actually think that loaded carries and deadlifts, again, it's a very um, stretched, cherry picked uh, science evidence, but there are some studies showing um, stretching muscles under tension like they've shown in birds 
will cause a great uh, hypertroph hypertrophic effect. Um, and I've found that to be the case anecdotally with me. When I'm deadlifting heavy or doing heavy carries is the best and largest my traps have ever been. And I got some decent traps not to toot my own horn. For the Natty Boys, my traps grow pretty good. Um, and, I, and I give that all, all that credit to deadlifts. So in that case, if you really load it up shrugs and let them boys stretch pretty good, rather than doing these little uh, fat guy laugh movements with barely range of motion, um, Overall, I'm not a shrug fan, and this may get some hate, but I'm going to throw it in the nice beginner gains, both of them. I think it's just a movement people think will work and is optimized, but they're doing it wrong, and there's other better bang for your buck. Last two here, fam. We're digging in the, the muscle up. Now, this is a little bit of a technical movement. It's kind of like a breakdown of a gymnastics move. Um, yeah, people like Cali Muscle and some more jack guys get her done. I like to bang out some muscle ups, but in my head, I think of them more as like a party trick. You definitely can get some lats, some triceps. You get uh, some upper body stimulus from it. Um, the hypertrophy effects on them, I think, are probably minimal. Um, the savagery effects, I think, is a coin flip. Some people think they look stupid, and some people probably think that you're the coolest person on the planet doing them. And for that fact, we're going to throw it into the beginner gains. You're probably not making a ton of gains on it, um, but you might get a couple claps or high fives from some CrossFit folks. Last but not least, the sled push. This is going probably near the yoke and things. It is one of the best movements for general health, uh, general athleticism, and for most people. I think pushing something heavy or moving a sled around is absolutely amazing. But that being said, um, it's concentric only. It's probably not building a lot of back. It may build a little bit of calves, hams, and glutes. But it's not my go-to for anything having to do with pure strength um, in terms of powerlifting or pure hypertrophy in terms of bodybuilding. It's a great overarching encompassing movement and I suggest people do it. But for this exact tier list, it's going in the do you even lift. How sad is that? We got the sumo boys and the sled pushers, which can be badasses, stuck in the do you even lift. But that's the official list, ladies and gentlemen. You want that Cobra back, take notes. Appreciate y'all. New tier list, new education, new vlogs dropping every single day on the channel. 3SB.co for all your clothing needs. Turn on notifications, share with this friend. It helps so much for the likes and comments. I appreciate all the support, man. We're growing. We over me. Be a part of something big in yourself. Silent Mike, I'm out of here.